Hey guys, it's Ali and how is it going? I just found out something pretty interesting and quite important about panning in Ableton. And it really changed my approach when it comes to panning um, because it's quite a game changer, I think. So let me show you what I found. Um, so the way I was using panning is kind of placing instruments somewhere in the stereo field um, to, yeah, create some separation and whatever. So imagine this whole screen is my uh, is kind of the song or the stereo field, I would think, for example, hey, let's put the snare over here or let's place a piano fill or piano run over here. And um, that's kind of what I would do in order to just place sounds in a certain in a certain space, because that's kind of what panning does, I thought. And the way you would achieve this um, is by obviously turning up a sound more in one channel than the other in order to make it seem like it's coming from that side, um, which is fine when something is a mono sound or when a sound is mono, which means there's the same sound in both channels. But I was panning around snares, one shots and all kinds of sample samples. And some of them were in stereo, which means there is different stuff in the left channel compared to the right channel, which means if you ch turn one of them down and one of them up, the mix between those two different sounds is also going to change, which is also going to change the overall sound of your sample, the sample that you're using or the instrument that you're using. So let me show you exactly what was going on because I did some testing then and was like, is that really true? Um, so I just took silence and uh, yeah, created an easy setup with two different sine waves, which are two octaves apart and panning the lower sound all the way to the left and panning the higher sound hard right, which sounds like this. Or an octave higher like this. So yeah, we have the high sound all the way on the right speaker and the other, the low sound all the way to the left, um, completely separated. But here you can see, well, both uh, channels are more or less same uh, amplitude or whatever and now we could start panning and once we start panning to the right we realize the high note is staying there but the low note is disappearing and till once we pan it hard right we're only left with the high note if we pan it hard left we're only left with the low note so obviously panning the sound has completely changed what it sounds like and even though some other samples might not have this kind of extreme effect or panning some other samples might not have this extreme effect, it obviously does have an effect where, where you pan uh, your stuff. So yeah, let's look at a piano, for example. So I did some checking in because I always had problems with the grand piano in Ableton. I almost hate it. <laughs> Maybe a strong word, but it's super phasey. If you make dance music, it's not mono compatible at all and stuff, but yeah. So look at this picture real quick. We have this piano and it has one mic on the left and one mic on the right. That's kind of how pianos can be mic'd, which leads to the lower notes being louder on the left side and the higher notes being louder on the right side. And there's also obviously some delay because the higher notes arrive later to mic one, for example, than the lower notes. So you have a pretty stereo sound which kind of resembles you sitting in the middle because when you're sitting in the middle, your ears, your left ear would hear the lower sounds um, louder and your right ear would hear the higher sounds louder. But the problem, if you say, hey, I want to have a quick piano run, um, which is like a piano feel like going lu -lu 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 down or something like this, just with higher notes, but you say, hey, I want this kind of in the background and pan to the left. So you could place the piano over here and the listener's head would be over here where I'm going to put this ugly record thing for now. So once you do that, you're actually enabled to turning up the content of the left mic and turning down the content of the right mic. So if you want to have this high notes and you pan it to the left, you're going to turn down the low notes and turn up, uh, turn down the high notes and turn up the low notes, which is not really going to make it seem like you pan the whole sound over here because it's obviously kind of different because you're turning up the low notes and turning down the high notes. So in order to really pan a piano to the left, you would have to have a piano 
which is sampled in mono, which is with one mic, um, for example. So obviously there are many problems and also so solutions for the problems. And um, the deal is that you just, I, well, I'm just going to keep this in mind from now on because panning stuff around um, might have an overall effect on the sound. So if I'm using a snare and I want to pan it, I'm going to check if it's if the snare is already stereo or if it's in mono so so I can make a good decision about the panning. Um, so yeah, you I already showed you the, the you know, I already showed you the <laughs> grand piano example. Yeah, I just had another little step sound here which which I was working with where I had this problem when I was panning it to the right for example. Sounds like this if you pan it to the left. Sounds quite different. So yeah, maybe you encounter this problem with some samples and really keep in mind that you're turning up one side and turning down one side and that those sides might actually be different. So a solution for this, maybe a quick fix is that you would have to have different pan pots for the two different sides to kind of decide where they go. And obviously Ableton doesn't have this option. Pro, Pro, uh, Pro Tools does, but um, yeah, I guess you can kind of set it up, which you're going to need an extra track for. So let's du duplicate this silent track, for example. I already did. Now there is another one coming. Let's delete this one. And here in silent, we can then say, hey, this is the left channel which means the thing that I turned to the right, uh, to the left is going to stay and I'm going to turn down the other one and I'm going to do the opposite in this channel where I turn down the left one and leave the right one, which now leads to this sound being here, this sound being here. We can even group these together real quick. So it's more obvious they're supposed to be one instrument. So if we now pick both of them, we have the same instrument as before. Okay, but now let's actually switch up the panning, which means since we only have this sound here, we are going to stop panning it. And um, same goes for this one. Now both of them are in the middle. If we now want the separated sound, we pan them hard left, hard right. But now you have complete control over um, where what part of the sound goes. So obviously you always have to check for like phase issues and these kind of things because many samples that you use that which are in stereo, which sound very nice, might not even sound that nice in mono. Um, but some of them might be fine. So if you realize, hey, there's this little extra thing in the snare or shaker or whatever, in one channel and it's missing in the other and I want to pan the sound, but I don't want to lose it. Then you can set this up and put the same sample. Well, put, um, yeah, let's do it with a sample real quick, just so it's clear. So we have this piano sample, which might have a different sound in the left and in a right channel. Let's group it real quick. And we're going to use this channel as the left channel which means we can pan it hard left and this channel as the right channel, which means panning it hard right. And then we take an utility plugin um, to say, hey, this one is only the left sound. And we take another utility plugin for the other channel, which is then going to make it only the right sound up. Okay, and we don't, yes. So now we pan them so they actually are in the left and the right channel of this group. Um, let's put this together real quick. Okay, but let's take these guys out. So this is how the normal sound would sound. But now if we say like, hey, actually I want this sound, I want to pan it to the right, which means if this is lower, for example, we turn this one up, which would be like panning it, but then we can also feed some of the other side to the other channel. Gives you full control over where you want to pan this stuff. So yeah, pick two channels and do the setup of the utility and the panning and 
there you go. It might not always work, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it's also fine to lose some of the left side, but sometimes it's not because you pick the sound because you really want that sound, but you also want to pan it, but it's a stereo sound. And yeah, for me, that was a pretty good find because it kind of changed my approach when it comes to panning and this kind of stuff. If you found it helpful, feel free to subscribe or check out my other videos. Um, yeah, focusing on this kind of stuff and kind of sharing all the things I stumble across while I'm practicing and learning some things about production. Stay tuned and I hope to see you around.